All right, welcome back. This is our fifth lesson on simplifying polynomial expressions. And today we are looking again at the word simplify means to what? Add, subtract, multiply, and divide. We're looking at how multiplication and division relate to addition and subtraction. Now, uh, reminding you, what property relates multiplication and division to addition and subtraction? This property is distributive property. Okay, Distributive property relates the two. And it says that whenever multiplication, whenever multiplication meets addition, distribute the multiplication over the addition. So when multiplication meets addition, we distribute the multiplication, we get what? A times B is AB, and A times C is AC. So we get AB plus AC. Looking at quick two examples from last lesson. Okay, so multiplication meeting what? Addition, we have monomial multiplied by trinomial, monomial multiplied by binomial. The multiplication distributes over the addition. Multiplication, what? Distributes over the addition, and we multiply. 5 times 2 gives 10. C times C squared, remember we're adding the exponents, we get C to the third. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. C times C is C squared. 5 times 4 is 20, and we attach the C to the end, so 20C. And now 2C times 7C, we do the 2 times 7 is 14. C times C, we're adding exponents, we get C squared. 2 times 8 is, well, 2 times negative 8 is negative 16, C on the end. Okay, C attached to the end. And we start with degree. Largest degree is third degree. Nothing matches. See, we're done multiplying. We're done multiplying. Now we're adding. Nothing matches C cubed. So we look. Nothing matches. We just write our 10C cubed term. Remember that when we add, something must match. What matches doesn't change. Does something match the C squared term? Yes. C squared matches C squared. When we're adding, what matches doesn't change. We get C squared. And we add what's in front, negative 15 and 14, since the signs are different, we subtract 15 minus 14 is 1. We don't write the 1. Larger number is negative, so we get negative 1c squared written as negative c squared. We'll cross these terms out, and now we look at our matching first degree terms, or c to the first power. So c matches c, 20 minus 16 is what? 4. So we get a positive 4, and the positive becomes the addition sign, and we are done with this problem. Now. Looking down here, reminding, when multiplication meets addition, again, we multiply first, okay, and distributive property applies. Okay, when multiplication meets addition, okay, distributive property applies, we look at what? Monomial multiplied by binomial, monomial multiplied by binomial, and now multiply. Be careful here. 3 times 4 is 12, and attach the a's. a times a gives what? Adding the exponents gives a squared, and attach the b to the end. So we get 12a squared b. Now, 3 times negative 5 gives negative 15. A, there's no A to combine it with, so we get an A. B times B is what? B squared. Okay, now, negative 4B squared times 2A squared. Okay, be careful. I told you guys in the last video to distribute the negative and change this to addition. Don't do this if you have something else next to the negative. Distribute the negative with the 4B squared, and remember the negative will change the signs. Just treat this as a negative 4. Negative 4 times 2, okay, negative 4 times 2 gives negative 8, and we have what? Put your variables in alphabetical order. So put your a squared first and your b squared second, reminding you that multiplication, we are just gluing things together. Negative 4b squared times 1, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, and we attach the b squared to the end. Now, are we done multiplying? Yes, the multiplication is done. Now we are adding, and when we're adding, we're looking for things that match. When you add, something must match, and what matches doesn't change. Now the question is, does anything match a squared b? And we're looking for exact match. Does anything match exactly a squared b? Well, a squared b, no. Okay, nothing matches a squared b. This is an a b squared, and this is an a squared b squared. They do not match. So nothing matches a squared b. Does anything match a b squared? No. Okay, this is an a squared b squared. That's different. We're looking for exact match. Does anything match a squared b squared? No. Does anything match your b squared? No. Okay, so since nothing matches, you cannot add anything together. We are done. This is simplified. Okay, so when you add, in this class, when you add, you're looking for exact match on the variable. Since nothing matches exactly, you're done. Okay, up here, we had a c squared matching a c squared, we could combine them and get negative c squared. We had a c matching c, we could combine them and get a 20 plus minus 16 is 4c. So again, when you're adding, you're, look for, you're looking for exact match. Remember, multiplying first, adding next. Okay, so multiply, then attempt to add. Now, we're looking today at 
a little deeper into the distributive property. How many of you guys out there have heard of the word FOIL? Okay, you've heard of FOIL. You've heard this term before. Now, in this class, you are not allowed to FOIL yet. Okay, so we're going to use this trick later. Right now, I want you guys to see what, what is FOIL. FOIL is a trick, and we will learn this in the next lesson. Right now, we're not even going to, we're going to act like we've never heard of the word FOIL. Let's look at this example. Number, well, I'm just going to write something up here. A plus 2 multiplied by quantity A plus 3. Okay, so quantity A plus 2 multiplied by quantity A plus 3. So here we see what? Notice we have a binomial multiplied by binomial. We have multiplication meaning what? Multiplication meaning addition. And what happens when multiplication meets addition? Regardless. Regardless of what we're looking at, star multiplied by star multiplied by triangle plus Mars. We talked about this. Whenever multiplication meets addition, distributive property applies. So we have star triangle plus star Mars. Okay, it does not matter what you're looking at. So here again, when multiplication meets addition, what property applies? So let's act like we've never heard of the word foil at this point, because maybe in previous classes you've learned uh, that you can FOIL this. Okay, so right now you're not allowed to FOIL. Instead, we're going to use what? Concepts of distributive property. I'll explain why later. Okay, so for right now, let's look at, let's look at quantity A plus 2 multiplied by quantity A plus 3. Before we do this, maybe this will help. Okay, so we need to pay very close attention to this. If I write 3 times quantity X plus Y, do you agree? 3 times quantity X plus Y, whenever multiplication meets addition, we get what? 3x plus 3y, distributive property applies. So we have 3 times x, 3 times y. Let's look at this. 3ab multiplied by quantity x plus y. 3ab multiplied by quantity x plus y. Whenever multiplication meets addition, what property applies? Distributive property. So we, get, we glue this together. 3abx and 3 plus 3aby. Okay, now let's look at this example. What if I write a plus b here. Maybe do it where I have more space. What if I write quantity a plus b multiplied by quantity x plus y? Okay, so what you need to see, just like we have a monomial 3, monomial 3, okay, and we multiply, monomial 3a plus b, we multiply or we glue this together. We're looking here at the same thing except in terms of a binomial. So when multiplication meets addition, does distributed property apply? I want you to circle this. Think of this as a unit. Okay, so just like star triangle, star Mars concept, we're looking at what circle times x plus what circle times y. So we're looking at quantity a plus b times x, I'm going to circle it, plus quantity a plus b, I'm going to circle it, times y. So you see quantity a plus b times quantity x plus y is quantity a plus b times x plus quantity a plus b times y. Notice, we don't like to look at this. If I asked you this, what is more familiar to your eyes? Are you familiar with looking at 3 times quantity x plus y? Or are you used to looking at quantity x plus y times 3? Which one is more familiar to your eyes? Well, you would say the first one looks more familiar. We're used to putting the monomial first. Now, so quantity a plus b times x plus quantity a plus b times y here is more familiar if we write it to x times quantity a plus b plus y times quantity a plus b. This is more familiar to our eyes. You're saying, I'm still having a hard time seeing this. Well, let's look. As we do examples, hopefully this will make sense. Now, looking at this example here, I'm going to erase this off the board. We're looking at, if I wrote here, if I wrote 2a times quantity a plus 3, or let's say 2x. 2x times quantity a plus 3, you would be comfortable with this. You would say, well, that's 2ax plus 6x. You could take the 2x times the a, get 2ax, 2x times the 3, and get 6x. Let me write it like this. Do you agree that this is 2x multiplied by a plus 2x multiplied by 3, and then we combine them and get 2ax plus 6x? Now, it's the same thing here. We're looking at the binomial as a unit. Okay, so if we multiply, we get quantity a plus 2 times what? Notice, just like we did 2x times a and 2x times 3, we're going to have what? 
quantity A plus 2 times what? A plus quantity A plus 2 times what? Times 3. Now, we're not used to looking at it like this. Rather, we're better to write A times quantity A plus 2 plus 3 times quantity A plus 2. Is it? Is a times quant is, is quantity a plus 2 times a the same as a times quantity a plus 2? Yes, we can flip things around when we multiply. Okay, so if I ask you this, is 2x times 3 the same as 3 times 2x? Absolutely. Is, three times, is 5 times 3, here, is 5 times 3 the same as 3 times 5? Yes, the commutative property of multiplication says we can flip things around. We can change the order in which we multiply. Okay, or I should say... We can ch change the order of the numbers as we multiply, okay? So we can switch the location of the numbers. So the key is to skip this step. Let's try this again. Quantity A plus 2. This is what you need to do for your homework. Comes quantity A plus 3. We're going to take and underline the quantity A plus 2 and multiply. Putting the A first. Putting A first. We get A times quantity A plus 2 plus 3 times quantity A plus 2. Notice that the A plus 2 multiplied by the A and the a plus 2 multiplied by the 3. Okay, so we have a times quantity a plus 2, 3 times quantity a plus 2. Now, are we done with distributive property? No. What happens when multiplication meets addition? Again, distributive property applies. Multiplication meets addition, we distribute again. a times a is what? a squared. a times 2 is 2a. 3 times a is 3a. And 3 times 2 is 6. Now, are we done multiplying? Yes, we are done multiplying. Now, what are we doing? We are adding. So we're looking for things that match. Does anything match a squared? No. So write your a squared. We're done with this term. Now we're adding again. Does something match a? Yes. A matches a, so write your a. What matches doesn't change. Add what's in front. 2 plus 3 is what? 2 plus 3 is 5. So we end up with what? 5a and plus 6. Now, this is a simplified, simplified version of this problem. Now let's look at example number, example number 13 on page 337, quantity n minus 9 times quantity n plus 7. Okay, so quantity, I think, even if you're having trouble with this at first, I think this will, this will click for you in a minute. Quantity n minus 9 times quantity n plus 7. Okay, so I want you to pause the video, attempt it on your own. That's the best thing. Pause the video, attempt it on your own first. Okay, then come back. Now, Looking at quantity n minus 9, remember that whenever multiplication meets addition, distributive property applies. So we're multiplying. Okay, we have what? N, quantity n minus 9 times n is the same as n times quantity n minus 9. Okay, then we have quantity n minus 9, or this unit, multiplied by 7 is the same as 7 multiplied by the unit, n minus 9. Now, we can then take, notice we still have distributive property, multiplication meaning addition, we distribute again, n times n is what? n squared, n times negative 9 is negative 9n, now we have positive 7 multiplied by this quantity, multiplication meaning addition, distributive property applies, 7 times n is what? 7n, and 7 times negative 9 is negative 63, and we are done multiplying. Now that we're done multiplying, we are adding. Does anything match n squared? No. So we write our n squared, cross it out. Does anything match our n term? Yes. What matches doesn't change. Write your n. Add what's in front. Now, since the signs are different, subtract. N minus, I would say 9 minus 7 is 2. Take the sign of the larger is negative. So this is a negative 2n. Cross these out. We have a minus 63. And you are done. You have combined everything under addition, and you are finished. This is the simplified version of the problem given. Now, uh, let's go a little further with this. Let's look at... Uh, let's see, number 33 on page 337, quantity A plus B, okay, quantity A plus B multiplied by quantity A squared uh, minus 3AB minus B squared. Okay, so same thing, except here we have what? Binomial multiplied by trinomial. What happens when multiplication meets addition? When multiplication meets addition, what property applies? We have distributive property. Okay, so I want you to focus on the first unit. Underline the A plus B. We're looking at quantity A plus B. You have to see this the same as you see a monomial. You have to see this if I did, um, well, 
we'll just we'll just here. If I did x y times quantity a squared minus three a b minus b squared, you would see this as unit x y multiplying by each. So we have unit x y, which is a monomial multiplied by a squared. Okay, put parentheses around it. Here I'll circle it. Unit x y times a squared minus unit x y. Uh, here, minus unit xy multiplied by what? AB, or 3AB. And we would have unit xy multiplied by B squared. And then you combine these as just glue it together, putting A squared first, xy, since it's all multiplication, minus 3AB xy minus b squared xy. It's just the same thing, except you're dealing with monomial. But we skip all this. We skip all this and just simply say what? xy times a squared. We glue it together as multiplication a squared xy. xy times negative 3ab is negative 3ab xy. And xy times negative b squared is negative b squared xy. So you just glue it together. But you have to see the same thing. You have to see the same thing with binomial. Okay, so same thing. Binomial multiplied by a squared. We have binomial a plus b. Binomial a plus b multiplied by what? A squared. And it's easier, because we're thinking of this as being a unit. Okay, unit multiplied by a squared. It's easier to read if we put the a squared first. So we don't even write this. We just write what? A squared multiplied by quantity a plus b. Okay, now do it again. Quantity a plus b times negative 3ab. I'm just going to erase this and start the problem correctly. Quantity a plus b times a squared, put the a squared first, times quantity a plus b. Quantity a plus b times negative 3ab is negative 3ab first. It's easier to read, times quantity what? Times quantity a plus b. And then quantity a plus b times negative b squared is negative b squared times quantity what? a plus b. Now, take the a squared, and notice distributive property still applies. a squared times a is a to the third. a squared times b is what? Put them in alphabetical order and glue them together. Put your a squared first, then your b. a squared b, then negative 3ab times a is negative what? 3. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. a times a is a squared. Put your b second. Okay, now negative 3ab times b. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. a, put your a. And b times b is b squared. Now, negative b squared times a. <clears throat> We have negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Put your a first, a what? b squared. And then negative b squared times b is negative b to the third. Now, are we done multiplying? Yes. Now what are we doing? We are adding. Okay, so multiplication is finished. Okay, now we're adding, so we're looking for things that match. Starting with largest degree, a to the third. Does anything match our a to the third term? No. So we have a to the third, cross it out. Now looking at our a squared b term, does anything match a squared b? Yes, we have an a squared b here. Underline it, what matches doesn't change. a squared b will not change. Add what's in front. Here we have a positive 1 and a negative 3. Since the signs are different, subtract. 3 minus 1 is what? 3 minus 1 is 2. Take the sign of the larger, which is negative, so we get a negative 2 a squared b. Cross these out. Now here we have what? a b squared. And AB squared, what matches doesn't change, so go ahead and write your AB squared. And add what's in front. We have a negative 3 and a negative 1. Since the signs are the same, you add. This is a 4. 3 plus 1 is 4. Since they're both negative, this is negative 4. I'm sorry, AB squared. I wrote that wrong. AB squared, AB squared. Cross these out. And on the end, we have what? Minus B cubed. Students will say, well, I thought we put our third degree first and our second degree, then our first degree. So why do you have A to the third here and B to the third here? The rule is this, if you have more than one type of variable, here we have an A and a B, go with alphabetical order. Just pay attention to the first, the first letter, or the letter that comes first alphabetically. Here we have an A first, A comes before B. Focus on your A and ignore your B. So we have what? A to the third. Then we have what? A squared, A to the first and a to the zero. So we're not, we're not paying attention to the b in terms of degree. This is considered proper order. Put your third degree a, then your second degree a, then your first degree a, then your zero degree a on the end, and ignore your b terms. Okay, so this would be considered proper order. Now, uh, why are we not foiling? Why are we using distributive property here? Right now, you guys are putting things together. Think of it like this. Right now, you're building little towers. Every problem that you simplify, 
You're building a little tower. So what is this? Putting this together. Simplify means to what? Simplify means to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, or put it together. So you're building these little towers. You're building these little towers. Okay, every problem that you do, you build a, think of Legos. You're putting the Legos together and building a tower. So every time you simplify, you're putting the Legos together and building a tower. Okay, so this is the tower that you built. Okay, soon I'm going to ask you to take everything and break it back apart again. So you're going to have to take the towers that you built, and you're going to have to break them back apart. Okay, so putting the tower together, putting the tower together with Legos, building it up, is simplifying. Then I'm going to ask you in about two weeks to take the tower back apart in order, and to go backwards. What do we call going backwards? You're going to have to take the simplified problem and break it back apart in order. And to go backwards is, to call, is called factoring. Okay, so to go backwards or to break it back apart is to factor. So if simplify, I always joke, if simplify means to make simple, then factor means to what? To complicate. Not really. Okay, simplify does not mean to make simple. Simplify means to add, subtract, multiply, divide. So factor means to un- unsubtract or unmultiply or break it back apart into a product. We're going to break this back apart. Okay, so simplify means to put the tower together and factor will mean to break it all back apart again. And once we're done simplifying, putting it together, then factoring, breaking it back apart again, you will then understand expressions as a whole. You have to be able to put them together, you have to be able to take them back apart again. So why am I making you guys use distributive property right now? Because when we factor if you cannot understand the concept of binomial distribution, factoring is going to be much more difficult. It's very important for you to see the concept of quantity A plus B times A squared. Doing this instead of foiling will save you guys a lot of headache when we get to factoring. So it's very important that you see quantity A plus B as a unit. And that concludes this lesson.